Fortress Marine Anchors, stronger, faster, lighter, presents the 2014 Chesapeake Bay Anchor Holding Power Test. Here's marine expert and independent reviewer, Chuck Hawley. Welcome to day two of the Fortress Anchor Test off of Solomons, Maryland. Uh, we're gonna catch up with some of the work that we didn't quite finish yesterday using the same locations. And then we've got a whole new round of anchor testing for today. We're currently pulling on the FX37 set to 32 degrees. This is the second test of that anchor. So the second pull of the Fortress FX37 at 32 degrees had a nice smooth ramp up to about 1,300 pounds, a little spike to 1,500 pounds, and then sort of a slow descent down. Uh, not entirely sure why that happened, but this is the anchor set in its sand holding position. So we got pretty darn good tension out of what would be, you know, your normal anchor on board. One of the challenges with doing an anchor test like this is that we're going to test each anchor multiple times. At the end of our test, we'll have pulled anchors 48 to 60, maybe even 72 times. The challenge is that each time you pull an anchor through the bottom, it disturbs the bottom because you're sort of churning it up like a plow going through a field. What we're trying to do in this test is to pick a single starting spot and go out in radials away from that spot so that each pull is going out into untouched territory. When we've gone through each anchor once, we move to a new starting spot or datum and we pull out in this radial pattern again. We hope by doing this we don't uh, give any one anchor an advantage over any other anchor by pulling it through the same area twice. Let's go ahead and meet some of the staff and some of the media aboard the Rachel Carson for this week's anchor testing. Uh, I live with the with these bottoms here in the Chesapeake uh, so it's fascinating to watch how these different anchors come through um, and of course there none of this bottom is uniform in any way uh, there's shells down there there's wood down there so there's nothing uniform in these bottoms uh, what I'm most impressed with is the protocol that really does evaluate these anchors over time and over a, success, a succession of toes to see how they how they work uh, and clearly there are some that are performing better in this clay bottom than others. Fortress is not only a manufacturer of anchors but we are a company that has a lot to learn and we want to learn so that we can forever improve our products give better advice and we just genuine, genuinely are interested in learning about anchoring. The goal of this test was just to learn uh, and do so in a manner that was different from what uh, technology av was available 20 years ago. So the tools we have today are much more sophisticated. Um, the Rachel Carson has you know, dynamic positioning, uh, an incredible winch, um, and what it's allowed us to do is to create a test that is uh, accurate and repeatable um, to eliminate any bias between any particular anchor pool. Uh, we have a, a wide variety of group of very experienced boaters here. Uh, of course, starting with the crew uh, of the Rachel Carson, um, all the way down to uh, the writers and of course us staff members here at Fortress as well. We've all had a wide variety of experiences in anchoring and boating. Uh, whether it might be lakes or uh, 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 cruising uh, or power boating, whatever. Um, I think we've got a good cross section of people and we certainly are all very opinionated and, and willing to share those opinions with people. The only anchor tests I've done are the ones where I set my anchor, go to sleep in my cabin and wake up on a reef somewhere. Uh, that's, that's the only kind of uh, practical anchor testing I've ever done. I've never done a uh, clinical study like we're doing today. And I'll be honest, I was lost for the first couple hours. I had no idea what the little squiggles on the chart mean, chart meant, but it's starting to become a little more clear now. I'm starting to be able to understand what's happening. And it's, uh, I'm gaining more information now. I think a lot of people assume that, uh, you know, you have to have a hefty anchor for it to do any good. And I think we're finding out that the design is more important than just the overall weight of the anchor. So uh, having a good, well-designed anchor is the, the key. 
uh, to this sort of thing. And obviously, when you when you're going out in your boat and you're camping out or you're gunk hauling, uh, when you go to bed at night, uh, you don't want to have to worry about your anchor. So the more you know about it, the better off you're going to be. I think the data overall will help us to look at that once we're finished. But um, we just don't know what's going on on the bottom there, and we do see some anchors giving us surprising results. Some were performing better than others that just didn't realize would do, do that well or vice versa. Go. So the last anchor we tested on day two was the Danforth 35-pound uh, high tensile. It uh, dug in relatively quickly and continued to climb. We had set our scale to only 1,500 pounds because no anchor had pulled more than that except for the fortress and it just blew past that 1,500 pound mark. We're not exactly sure how high it went because we couldn't see it on the graph, although we've got the data, but probably somewhere north of 2,000 pounds. Very impressive performance. Then the, the performance started tapering off, and by the time we got to the 10 minute mark, I would say it was about four or 500 pounds, but incredible holding power in the middle part of the test. So we had a very productive day two of our soft mud anchor test. We took, pulled a total of 21 different poles in different locations, and we had some exceedingly strong performances by a couple of anchors in the newest and the fourth location. Uh, other anchors in the third location didn't shine as much as we thought, again indicating that where you anchor is an important variable. We'll be back with the full results at the end of tomorrow, where we'll have pulled each anchor at least four times, and we'll have a much better idea which anchor holds best in these soft mud conditions.